so if everybody can hear me, hi, I'm Miriam, and it's really good to, to be here. And uh, I thought about how I could uh, talk about hallucinatory art. So I made a video yesterday in the forest, and um, it was a way to show you my process. My research is on um, uh, how sound affects our way of perceiving colors and shapes and forms and how by singing or making sounds, our vision is altered. So I actually did a sort of a demonstration of a, a painting where I sang at the same time. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you watch it with me. So I'm going to share my, um, my vision and then, we can, uh, and then we can talk about it and then I can tell you how I got into it. You can ask me questions and then we can do a little exercise. Um, I have a question for Zalipa. How much time do we have? That's very important so that I know what um, to. I can't hear you, so maybe you can text it. We have an hour. Okay, I hear you. Okay, good. One hour. Okay, that's perfect. So we're going to just watch um, a little example first. I don't know what's going Has on on my. So I'm going to, oh yeah, I'm going to first tell you what the definition of hallucinatory, where it comes from. Uh, actually, it's uh, the idea that you're getting a sort of a hallucination, which is coming from your mind's eye. It's not just the actual physical world that you're looking at, but it's also mixed with the way you personally see the physical world. Because even though we all think that we see the same thing, we don't. You know, we see forms and colors slightly differently. Okay, so um, I was very interested in exploring that. Uh, and well, it's something I've always done personally. I've always enjoyed drawing and painting while singing. But um, when I saw that it actually affected the way I sang or the way I painted or drew, I started looking into it, thinking it could also have some, uh, it could actually help people develop their brain differently. So it could actually be used for medicine, like for therapy or people who want to work on, uh, you know, like autistic people who have trouble looking, understanding eye contact, like uh, facial expressions, uh, people who have memory problems. Sometimes if you create new connections in other parts of your brain, you can actually um, build new bridges in your mind. Because the brain, uh, you know, you can, the, the memory they found goes everywhere in the brain. So if you, if there's a part of your brain that doesn't work, you can activate other parts and it'll still use it as a memory storage. So anyways, uh, there's a lot of artists. You probably know some, like Kandensky was one of the them. He would paint by uh, listening to music. Uh, Basquiat, who's a famous contemporary American artist, he, was, he used to do that with jazz. So did Pollock. But there's also a very famous French painter uh, who, who actually was friends with a great music composer. And his name was uh, Blanc. Uh, I'll write it out after. But um, he was friends with um, Messian, Olivier Messian, which, uh, OK, Olivier Messian also was into hallucinatory composition. He did the opposite. He would look at like the colors in the church and he would play the organ focused on the colors coming out of the, uh, the light, the light, uh, the glass, you know, the, the glass uh, <clears throat> paintings, the vitraux, you know, 
uh, he would get all sorts of inspiration from the way the light was hitting those colored glasses at different parts of the day. And he, and he also got inspired by the visual things he saw around him to compose music. And that's where this hallucination came from. But he got very much um, uh, touched by his friend who was born with this weird kind of uh, sort of a strange brain thing that happened to him, which was uh, called synesthesia. Of every time he heard sound, he would see colors. Like he would hear the sound of a, of a church bell ringing and he would see colors just going or he would hear a certain sound of a, a car moving, a motor or a boat motor or, you know, just the sound of people walking and he would, uh, he would see a color because there's parts of his brain that were just naturally connected. And, you, you know, it was a cool thing to have. So he used it in his painting, but it did drive him nuts because he was never in a silent meditative moment. He always had this, uh, a load down of stimulation, visual and sensorial stimulation. And his name is Blanc Gatille. So I'm gonna write that down also. So Olivier Messiaen and Blanc Getty, who was that uh, painter, French painter, uh, who uh, saw color and painted color, uh, painted what he heard. Okay, so those are the people that are have been kind of inspiring me. I mean, there's a lot more than that. There's a, there's actually another great artist who's an Irish artist, and his name. And what I love about him is uh, he's uh, what this uh, this artist's name is Yeats. Okay, that's his last name. And what's beautiful about this guy, and I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna share my screen with you so you can see this painting of him first before we go into my work, because most artists, you know, they're always inspired by other artists. I mean, I. I Extra blue and green. Like this one, maybe even more blue. I'll add it over here. The mystery. Yeah. La, la, la. I showed you the metal part and uh, wh what uh, I was doing was actually getting a sense of the uh, space around me, which is actually a forest because I'm in Burgundy right now. And um, I wanted to kind of just feel the atmosphere, the vibration of the trees and the leaves and the decay and by singing, I felt like I was connecting with more in a visceral way with the material, the, the color and my physical bodily gesture. And, um, you know, I was very happy with the results. Um, it's a really interesting process, which I'm going to invite you to do something right now. Uh, because it really helps you uh, let go of your intellect. You know, you, I mean, I'm not saying you have to just do, you know, throw lots of paint on a canvas and, 
but it, what it allows you to do is kind of reconnect with your intuition um, and uh, kind of find the essence of what it is that you're trying to paint or you're trying to communicate and then you can come back to it later and refine it but there's something I find very liberating about this type of process um, I like to show you a picture of a part of the painting but I'm not sure uh, if yeah I'm going to just partage the call here there can you see this that's so that was the kind of uh, gesture that I found from the decaying leaves and the seeds and the weird little things that were underneath the leaves. Uh, I, I kind of like found it here by singing and painting on top and I even threw some earth on it and you know, I wasn't shy or scared to leave big clumps of acrylic on the canvas against kind of watered down acrylic, you know. And usually when I paint without singing, I, I, I don't let myself be that free, you know. So um, I just wanted to, do you guys see this? Do you see this, everybody? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do you have any questions, or you you can say what you think, or how you feel about it? If you've ever done this type of thing, um, you know, before I give you the exercise to do. Yeah, I like the sound in the back and the blending of the colors. And I'm actually sitting at the back of the house, and I'm not paying attention to this sounds right now do you have sounds for primary colors for primary colors um yeah, well have... well you know the the way i i mean i think that we all have a different kind of sound which we feel is connected with a color or shape or an atmosphere i mean because you know as as we have a a, you know, as we have a palette of sounds which are uh, in the infinite infinity, we also have an infinity uh, palette of colors, of light. So things are constantly changing. So, I mean, there are musicians and artists like Kandensky, and they always said, you know, well, red is this certain note. It's do, do, or it's re. You know, but I, I don't believe that. I, I think you just kind of, your brain kind of interprets something. It just, you know, it doesn't really matter. It, what matters is that you're, you're really connecting with that color. It's just, I think, sound, making the sound with your own body, even the physical motion of doing it on the ground in the area where you're in and where you're kind of just noticing the space around you, not just with your eyes and trying to illustrate it perfectly, but just trying to feel the whole energy and bring it out with your sound while you're painting, it just, it helps you kind of anchor yourself into something outside of your, your intention, you know, you, you, you see what I mean? So that's to answer your question is, I don't really have a specific sound for red. For example, red right now could be, you know, but maybe yesterday it was, you know, it was a darker red. Today it's a higher pitch red, a red of urgency that's, yeah. you know, ticking in front of me saying recording. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, I don't know, um, has anybody, does, do you guys want to try this exercise? Does everybody have some paper and a pen? You could just do it with a paper and a pencil. You don't have to use color today. Um, I'll be honest with you, for a long time I was drawing when I was younger, and then I started to um, the film, I started to do filming, 
filmmaking. But when I, but I, I found that when I went back to drawing and painting, I, um, I was more sensitive to, to the sounds and the environment around me. Absolutely, I, I personally think it's interesting to paint in an area. Uh, you know, of course, we have different things we want to express. Sometimes you want to paint a feeling that's deep inside, and it's you need to be in a quiet space where nobody's going to be around you, where you just want to be with yourself. And that's why I think there's a lot of painters who like to have a personal studio, which is not easy to have. I don't have a studio, for example. My studio is the nature or just being outside. You know, I don't, I don't have one right now. You know, I, when I paint in my apartment, I have to deal with all the psychological energy of my family, which isn't bad, but you know, it's, so yeah, you, you can really feel, but I think it's exciting to kind of have to be flexible to your environment. Like, for example, this thing, can you see this image that I have on my desktop? I mean, it, like for me, it doesn't matter if anybody else likes it or not. I like it. So for me, it's, it's good. You know, if I don't like it, it's not good. If I like it, it's good. I don't, I've learned to not care what people think because for me, there's something very interesting that happened here. And my goal in this type of work is not necessarily the results that's on the canvas. What's important for me is um, the exercise of getting more in tune with my gesture and the material, you know, whether it's acrylic or oil or, you know, charcoal or whatever material, physical material I'm using on the, you know, to just get connected with the shapes, with the things around me. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do now, is anybody else want to say something or have you done paintings like that? Or is this just really weird for you? Or is this something that you're very familiar with? Uh uh, so for me personally, I always have to listen to music to make me feel something. And that's how I create my art, which I call melodic impressionism, because I want to give the impression of the kind of uh, feeling I got from the music. So sometimes I'll listen to um, okay. rock music, and then it will cause me to create um, usually a male figure or a male form inside a slightly distorted Jacob, pose. can we see your face? Oh, I'm just on my bed right now. That's all right. Yeah, Thanks. so it's me to, <laughs> It causes me so to So you create, need to listen to music? Yeah. Yeah, so um, it will cause me to create different kinds of work. Maybe I can just flip my camera around and show you what yeah. I do a little bit. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. For example, this was a rock song that I was listening to, and it's just a sketch that I did. Okay. And just a few other things like this, but they're, the emotions and the abstraction are all inspired by uh, the sounds that I hear. Okay, cool. So you're already kind of like familiar with that. So the difference now with this exercise I'm going to give you, uh, and oh yeah, I want to tell you something which you're going to like to hear. You know Leonardo da Vinci, right? Does everybody know who this um, Italian Renaissance guy I mean, he's pretty famous around the globe. He's dead now. It's 16th century. He painted the Mona Lisa. That's like the most famous one that everybody knows. Well, when he did the Mona Lisa, he actually had the woman pose and asked a whole bunch of musician friends to play music around her while she was posing and Leonardo was painting. And he needed that energy of music around her to make her have some kind of like deeper layers and, you know, mixed emotions in her face. So, and he, he writes about it. 
and they know about that. Art historians know that Leonardo da Vinci got, had a whole bunch of musical, you know, at, to create an atmosphere. He was creating music around her. Can you imagine the woman sitting there posing with a serious face and, or she was probably laughing or smiling and he was like, you know, doing this painting and he did an imaginary background anyways and he carried around that painting to the end of his life because it was a sort of self-portrait about who he was it wasn't really about the subject he wasn't in love with her because i don't know if you guys know but he was had an orientation towards other men so he he just loved that painting because it represented like his psyche you know anyways so Get some paper, a pen, colors, whatever you have, and I'm going to ask you. Uh, can I, can, to, I, use, can uh, I use a board? Yeah, whatever you have, whatever it doesn't matter. What matters is is you do this exercise. So, yeah. for the first for the first five minutes, I'm going to ask you to just play along with me. I'm going to make some, You does everybody hear me? Does everybody yeah. hear me? Yes. Okay. So, yep. so for the first, hi. Hi, Florence. I had never met you, by the way. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you too. I like your uh, picture. <laughs> Thank you. So, so, um, what you're going to do is you're going to play along with me. What, I'm going to make some sounds, and you're going to have to, like, basically interpret them with your movement, okay? That's just for, th this is going to be a three-minute, three-minute drawing. Three minutes, okay? Because we don't have much time. Do, do, and I have other like exercises. A... One. Okay, no problem. Two. Three. Let's go. I don't know if you can hear this. And that's it. Okay, stop. Whatever you heard, you might not have heard much, you might have heard a lot, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Did everybody do their, their sketch? Yeah. You're going to take your pen or your pencil or your colors, and you're going to make whatever sounds. You're going to remember a sound that you used to love when you were a child. And you're going to make that sound. Everybody's going to make the sound at the same time. If you can put your sound on, Everybody's going to make a sound at the same time. I'm going to also draw the sound that I used to sing. Uh, what I, well, you don't have, it doesn't have to be a sound you sang. It might be a sound you heard, but you have, it might be your favorite sound. It's your favorite sound when you were a child. One of your favorite sounds. It doesn't have to be the ultimate sound, but just the sound you remember that you liked. It could be the sound of a motorcycle or of a cat purring. Whatever the sound is, you're going to imitate it with your voice. Everybody's going to do it at the same time. That means Pharaoh, Jacob, Alexander, um, Florence, George, uh, Boitumelo, Becca, Zalipa, Isaac. Okay? So, you guys got it? Everybody got it? One... Yes. Two, and together, all together at the same time, okay? Three, let's go. Mm. 
And now get now you can start making the, the drawing, making your sound, and then taking the sound of the other people you hear at the same time that touch you. Yeah. You're still doing your sound, but you're listening to the sound of other people, and you're you're integrating their sounds in your drawing. Yeah, if everybody has to participate, or else it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can change. If you are tired of the same sound, you can do another sound of your childhood. School, school. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Hey, I'm not hearing anybody. Come on, we're almost finished. <laughs> I vibe with that one also. Okay. Yeah, everybody get something down on paper? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, okay, I hope everybody played the game. It really doesn't matter. Like, does everybody <laughs> want to show something that they did? Come on. It's, it's not showing your artisticness. It's just showing you participated. Can, can you see that? Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so this is the sound okay. of my childhood, like the, the moving vehicles. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Can you see this? Yeah, it looks like those, those, the, the chest looks like two eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't see, I, I, okay, I see the red. Wow, that's. That's wild. Yeah. What sound got your red to do the red? Um, Florence, I didn't see your picture. I saw you do something, but you had a background, which... <laughs> Here's okay. Mine. Okay, that's like perspective lines. Mm -hmm. No, lines, energetic lines. Okay, cool. Let's... What, what inspired okay. you to do those lines? Um, well, the music that, the sounds that I was making were from classical music that I used to listen to on road trips okay. when I was younger. Yeah. Cool. Nice. So for you, it's got some kind of like perspective structures. And then we have this, Jacob did this like two big circles with yeah. triangles, which is also geometric looking. What was that? Yeah. So mine was kind of inspired by the sound that uh, my Nintendo DS used to make when you turn it on, which is like a ding, and I feel like okay, I cut these cool. two sparkles in half, okay. and I don't know, it's just this energy. Interesting. Interesting. Anybody else wants to share? Watu Melo? Watu Melo? Isaac, Becca. I'm sorry. I came in late, so I was slow on the exercise, and I'm also driving, so I haven't been oh, able okay. to. Oh, okay. That's hard. dangerous. <laughs> okay. Well, you did make some sound, so that was nice. Uh, Dave, did you do anything? Isaac, I, I'm not sure. I saw... The, anyways, it was interesting what you were all showing me. Um... Okay, um, yeah, I, I saw that I, chest. I what did, were you thinking with the chest? 
Um, what well, was it that just yeah. inspiring you with your childhood? Uh, most of my childhood was spent indoors because, like, I never really had friends growing up, and I'd be indoors watching anime most of the time. So oh, okay. I was making, I was basically just looping the first three seconds from my favorite childhood anime, which is Tokyo Ghoul. Okay. Yeah, All right. Well, you learned how to do some muscular stuff there. Something like that. Something anatomical. Yeah, it actually looks like a face, believe it or not. It does? Yeah. The the two uh, the chest looks like two eyeballs. And the oh. the Do you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, I think the nipples are the ones that look like the eyeballs, I guess. Yeah. Anyways, you know, all everything it, there was any everything is uh possible. Um, did anybody, did I, I think, is, George, did I see yours also? The, what did you, you guys didn't talk about the one with the red on it. Somebody did some Alexander's. painting. Yeah, and Alexander said that he did the, the, those circles. That was the sound of what? The circles with the lines? That looks like water. And twirls, what was that? Hello? Hello? Okay, so the red, uh, I think it's just lines. They're like uh, slightly horizontal. Most of them are horizontal. And then there's like maybe three vertical lines. There was a sketch I was playing with, and I just figured I could put color on top of it. And every sound I heard kind okay. of just gave the impression that it was red, so I put red, red vertical horizontal lines on it. Did you say raped? No, red. <laughs> oh, red. Okay. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, um, all right. So, um, okay, cool. So I can show you guys mine. I mean, it's nothing, you know, extraordinary. It's just uh, me too. I had that same problem that Florence had. One second, let me just take off my camera thing. Um, I'll just put it on normal. I just, you know, was trying to, yeah. I just, you know, did some lines, circular things. Because that it was when I would sing, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a song I would sing to my baby sister when she was two to make her fall asleep. So, and then I started adding other little textures, which, which were the sounds that I heard you guys doing. So that's about it. So what this exercise, uh, why, how do you guys feel? I know it was very short lived and, um, you know, I, I mean, I think, you know, you can go deeper with it, but what, what did, you, did everybody, did anybody feel something new? Did you discover like something by doing feel this? A little bit of freedom, like uh, yeah. less control over the painting and more of the fun part. It was a fun experience, and I think I would use this from, from now for a lot of paintings because it's a slightly free space of mind. Great! Yeah. I'm glad to hear you say that. And that it was the idea. Memories. It brings good memories. So I think I also tried to paint and while making the sound that I've uh, heard, maybe not just childhood, but somewhere else and see if I could recall that, that vision I had. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, like I said, you can really use this when you're, you see like the environment where you are, George, for example, I see you're outside. Um, you could totally get uh, inspired by the sounds that surround you. If you hear birds or if you hear cars or the wind that's making the elements move around and do friction and, you know, all that stuff can really inspire your gesture. And I think it's interesting when we paint to... Of course, it's important to have some kind of a structure. I mean, you don't want to just 
throw paint on the canvas and then call it art, but it's, it's good to mix the idea that you have something you want to paint in mind, but at the same time, you bring in a little bit of that energy of the moment, of yeah. the moment of your body into it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to share with you guys this artist, uh, this, this, this artist, Yeats. He was um, a master. Oops, that's not, uh, yeah. This painting, it's a small image, but it, he was really a master at um, just feeling the energy around him. It's an oil painting, and this is actually a woman, a blonde woman. She's very white, because in Ireland, they have very pale skin, because there's not much sun over there. And she's mixed in with the nature, with the green stuff. You know, oh, wow. and he, I barely even noticed her. Yeah, it's it's very abstract, but at the same time, he was he painted that outdoor, and I think that was his his wife or maybe his fiance. I'm not sure. And um, you know, in the anyways, it, he was immersed in the nature, you know. And in the background here is like a little lake water, and this is like green stuff. This is a little house. You're not sure if it is or not, and it doesn't matter, but you feel that energy, you know, and he did this with oil. Like, I, you know, you, some people would probably not like this painting at all. I personally love it. I mean, I love paintings like that, but that's just personal. But I'm not saying you need to paint like this guy. Okay, this is another one, but I don't think you can see it because I guess I have to share each time. When I sh okay, I'm going to show you one that's extraordinary, that's a self-portrait of him. So I'm going to come back to this um, area here. Wait, arrêtez de partager. And then I'm going to come back and try to share the screen of this. Okay, this is the one. Do you see this one? This painting of Jack Yeats. Does everybody see yeah. this? Okay, yes. he, it's, it's yes. a self-portrait. It's a self-portrait of Yeats, and he's like entwined with the nature. He's entwined with the grass. You see his face, and then there's all this grass stuff all around him, and he's almost part of the earth, because in Irish culture, the old pagan beliefs, I mean, I'm not a pagan, but the old, the old beliefs, the old religion was, was that they, humanity, well, actually, even Christian beliefs is that we come from the earth, that, you know, we're created from earth. And so here he's like totally, you know, mixed in with the earth, with the soil, with the green moss, with the water, like, you don't know, he's just, it looks, he almost looks like he's a plant coming out of the grass. <laughs> <laughs> like a flower popping out or something with his head, you know? Anyways, and these are red flowers. So uh, he really freed his gesture. I mean, I know that this uh, this workshop isn't about Yeats. It's supposed to be about my artwork, but he's really influenced me in some ways, you know? I really, I, I find he's very liberating. Not many people know about him. Um, oh, why am I clicking on these? Okay. So, um, yeah, is, uh, is there any other questions? Do you want to see another video? Um, what, what's, what's happening? Any questions? Well, can this method be used for, I'm more of, I do body figures and I'm not very abstract. My work is very precise like portraits of people or still life or something. So is this method something that you'd necessarily use for such a thing? Or is it something that you'd use for something more free and abstract and all that? I think you can, you can do it however you want. Um, you know, I mean, I, I do, like, I, um, I paint, uh, I paint, um, I mean, I, I can paint figurative stuff and sing, too, you know. Um, 
sometimes you need silence to really focus, but um, you can also uh, use it as a technique. And it, like, if you feel you need to, you could try it out on yourself. You know, I actually, I actually did um, did some techniques like that where I would like draw myself in front of a mirror and just kind of sketch a self-portrait. And um, it just liberates your lines, you know? You can just try it. You can sing something deep from deep inside you or make sounds, so you could even scream if you're frustrated. There was a famous artist called Arto. Um, let me see, I'm gonna write it down on the conversation thing. His name was Antonin Arto, and he worked a lot he worked, he worked uh, with theat theater and, uh, and screaming. Actually, you know, and, and for him, liberating the voice was screaming. Like, so he would do these yelling exercises and just let out his vocal energy, his, his bodily energy. He even got in trouble sometimes with neighbors because he screamed so loud in the apartments. But he just did this physical body work, gesture with the voice, with the sound coming out of your body. And you could try that out when you're doing a self-portrait of your face or of your body. You can try it out and then tell me in the future how it came out, Alexander. Or George. Um, I, I just wrote a private email without realizing it to Alexander. I meant to send that out to everybody. I just didn't, I, I touched this, it's, it's, so I'm just going to send it. It's just the stuff I wrote about. Antona Arto, you can look him up. In, and then the Irish artist, uh, his name is um, Yeats. What's his name? Jack. Jack uh, B. Yeats. You can look him up too. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't know if that um, helps or not. I can show you something I did also with sound and images. But I don't know. Do we still have time or? Any? Do you guys want to see something else or is the, is this good? Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm down for it. Oh, I know. I'm going to show you guys something I did in the past, which um, is going to... One second. I'm going to show you something. I have to go on internet to get it. But it's worth showing you because this is another work I do since these are workshops where artists kind of show their stuff, right? Where they show their procedure. Is that it? Yes. Let me show you something else. I mean, if it interests you or else we can stop. It's up to you. I don't want to um, be overwhelming or something. It's very interesting. Oh, well, I'm glad that you like it. Yeah. Um... Um, do you have an audio of the video you played at first? Uh, the sounds that were playing in the back and you singing kind of just gave me ideas on what to paint and how to paint and how to feel about to paint and all that. I want to know if you can send that. <laughs> Who's, who just said that? Alexander. Oh yeah, Alexander. I mean... This, this, what we're doing right now is actually filmed. It's recorded, so you could just watch this, what we just talked about, and, and you'll have it all. Oh, for God, it was being recorded. Awesome. You know what I mean? Like the video. I mean, are you, are you talking about yeah, what I was just talking about? Yeah, I think that, I don't know how it works, but I think if you can ask, uh, I think it's Zalipa, who was the person who kind of managed this meeting i don't know who managed the meeting today i know there was Mwabi, but i don't see him 
Okay. Um, he was busy. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something where I'm going to share this with you people. Since you're interested in, in this kind of procedure, this is something I did in the past where I didn't use painting. I just, I used animation. I did this 3D animation. It was a long time ago because I'm kind of, you know, old, old now. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not old, but I'm, you know, I am in my 40s. So anyways, does everybody see this? I can. Yeah? Okay. It's, yeah. it's not very good, but when the person sings on the mic, they're making the animation move, and so they have this feeling. These are geometric shapes from Berber, um, uh, from Berber patterns, North African patterns, but you find these in sub-Saharan patterns. I'm sure you have patterns like that in, in zombies. In Zambia, right? Anyways, these are from North Africa, and I just took them and I yeah. did an animation with it. And I'm going to shut off the sound because you can't hear me. But what's happening is when the, a person takes a mic, it's sending a signal to this little Max MSP patch, and then it makes the video move. So the person who's singing has a feeling that they're connected with, um, they're connected with, uh, with the visual, you know? And um, that's what I had done a long time ago, but then I came back to simple stuff by just painting and singing because uh, I think it's more direct. Uh, you got any questions? Does this kind of interest you or? This is another kind of artwork, art style of. So basically, the the dot thingies, the tiny pixel bits, are not arranged when it's quiet. But when somebody picks up the microphone, they arrange themselves according to what you coded them to be. Yeah, but actually, it's not that complicated. It's. Basically, I made the video. I made a video with like little triangles. Those pixels are actually triangles. It looks like pixels because it's bad quality video, but they're actually tiny little triangles. Just gonna keep. And um, what happens is that I just animated them, you know, in 3D Studio Max or in Maya, you know, it's just a 3D software. And I just yes. animated it little by little and it just moves. And I made a quick time that was about, I don't know, four minutes. And then when and then I had a friend write a little code, a little max code, because I'm not very good at coding. And what it does is on the computer, the code make lets the quick time move when the person sings in the mic. The mic sends a signal to the code and the code lets the quick time move. And when the person stops singing, the code stops uh, the video. So there's moments where the video just stops and then it starts again. So the person who's singing has a feeling they're creating the pattern. But the the interesting part was it just made people want to sing. That was what was interesting. Oh. Anyways, I don't know. Is this okay with everybody or is this kind of like not really your what? Yeah, this is good. Uh I thought I have another question. Like most of the time, sure. when you play music on your computer, it brings these visuals. If there's no uh, image on that uh, song you're playing, so it will bring these visuals. Or when you get a new radio set, it has a small screen where you have these bars moving up when the sound goes. So would you call that hallucin hallucinatory art as well? Um, I think the, the term hallucinatory art is just the idea that you're just gonna, you're opening up your mind's eye. You're just finding new ways of seeing. Yeah. You're finding new ways of perceiving. 
the term perception isn't just with with eyes it's also with ears ears with smell with touch you know with the, the sensual experience we have five senses i mean so you i mean the hallucination is uh, i mean some many people to have a hallucinatory experience they'll take drugs or they'll try some mushrooms or some weed or some people will do stronger drugs yeah. or they'll drink a lot of alcohol i mean there's you know there's people you know who do that to get like this like expanded visions uh, you know like some uh, shamans they'll like take some kind of like natural leaf drug or eat something from some dangerous mushroom or dangerous tree to get like some hallucinatory thing going and i'm as an artist i'm like you can have that experience just by making sounds with your body and then creating art at the same time or making a video and singing at the same time i mean you know that's up to you to f to find you know but you know what i'm what i'm into is mostly the connection between singing and mm -hmm. Uh, seeing a visuals coming to you, whether it's your visual that you're creating or the visual someone else made, but that you're making it move with your voice. That's my art right now. That's what I'm researching. I don't know if that helps you, what I've said, or if I'm talking too much. No, you're that not. Helps. Um, helps. Just for clarification's sake, oh, I, I personally don't do the singing. Um, I, I use my, f my fingers. I just wiggle my fingers around. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but I just move my fingers around and just the movements create a certain environment for me. I, I personally don't really vibe with the making of the sound, but you said five senses and I guess the, the king part of it, the yeah. touch part of it, that, that also counts, right? Of course it does. Actually, you have you even explored moving around your toes and your your feet also? That's interesting. No, not really. Just my fingers. That's interesting. Hey, Sean. That's my son. Yeah, that's really interesting. So when you move your fingers, you get you get some inspiration. Is that it? Um. I wouldn't call it inspiration per se, but I get it's it's like it 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 helps me focus. Like even though my sister will be listening to loud music or just bugging me to do something for her, when I'm doing this, I can literally just tune away the whole world and I can create more efficiently. Oh wow! Interesting. That's very interesting. You know. <laughs> try to see maybe you could experiment with that and uh, see how um, when you experiment like when you if you if you did like a gesture with your hand Sean, come here. and then you do some lines on a big paper it's also important uh, when you're experimenting with gestures Sean I'll see you soon it's also important when you're doing gestures um, to get yourself like a, a surface which is, is as big as your body. If you, I mean, I know it's not easy to get paper that's really big. So what you could do is you could eat, you could try to either get a big cardboard or you could get like, you know, take some pieces of paper and, and uh, kind of take scotch tape and put it together to make a big space to do your gestures on. And then with one hand, you can go and then do some, you know, gestures and see how your brain reacts to this kind of, you know, I think it's interesting what you're saying to us. And uh, This is Pharaoh, right? Is Pharaoh who yes. talks about his hands? Yeah, yes, Pharaoh, I think it'd be really interesting to explore that first with your hands, and then you can either call my hands speak to me, you know? 
because you're finding an anchor, you're finding focus when you're twitching your hand. That's what you said, right? Does that help what I just said? I think his mic is just turned off. All right, can you hear me? Does, I mean, I, there's a lot of people that I haven't heard. Uh, well, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, have you uh, experimented with other forms of synesthesia, like um, maybe touch to uh, visual or um, smell to painting, those other senses? Yeah, of course, I have. Um, I haven't focused on it much, but I have. For example, uh, as, as far as yesterday, when I was in the forest painting, I could smell the earth, I could smell the trees, you know, because the nature sweats when it's hot. It has like, the, the earth has a special odor, the moss, um, you know, the dried leaves, whatever is in your environment. It has an odor, it, it, its odor changes according to the weather when it rains or when it's really, really hot, you, you can smell things and it, it does affect you. It does affect your mood and your way of, of drawing or painting if you're outside. Um, I know there's one artist, I forgot his name, he's a British installation artist and he puts, he, he's a video installation artist. And when he put his video in an installation, he put this very strong perfume like he took this very strong perfume and kind of sprayed it all over the place in the room. And when you, and it was a very nice smell, actually. It was very, like you wanted to stay there because it just smelled so good. And you would just sit there and watch this video, which was about his heritage or, you know, being, he's a British, actually he's a British and African, actually. It's, I don't know what country in Africa, but, um, you know, and he was talking about, you know, this, this, and then he had this perfume, which was very strong, and it was a, it was a British, very high class perfume. And it really made a, an impact on my memory as an, as an observer, you know, it, it, so that could be something to explore also for people who want to, do installations with their paintings, you know, you mm -hmm. could actually use smells. Some people use spices in their installations, or you could even put, you know, some odors around your painting when you're exhibiting. Could be very interesting. Or you could just have odors, special odors around you when you're painting, for you to get inspired when you're painting. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Sorry, my battery died. No problem, Pharaoh. Is that Pharaoh that said that? Yes, yes, it is. I'm back. So what about Florence and Isaac? Haven't heard you people. Any questions? <laughs> Don't be shy. I don't think I have any questions. The one I did was already asked, but I definitely am inspired to try and draw inspiration from sounds in my environment more. Cool. Yes. Yeah, and you know, my son, he loves to make weird sounds <laughs> all the time. Kids usually do. They let themselves with their voices. And uh, we all have that child inside. We got to let out when we're painting. And you, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, it's good for all types of paintings. You might be somebody who likes to paint with quiet, with meditation. And that's also, silence is beautiful. Um, there's another person who did this really cool stuff called Pauline Oliveros. She was, actually, she was um, a, um, she did this, um, uh, music, contemporary music, and she created this idea called deep listening, where basically she would have people 
uh, lay down and listen to the sounds around them. And then they would have to imitate the sounds they hear in their environment. So if you think you heard a, a, a fly in the room, you can, anyways, and so Paulina Oliveros, she did this deep listening thing. Okay, Jacob, um, we're going to wrap it up. All right, so is there any other questions? Um, yeah, so you can look up Pauline Oliveros. If you want, I can show you something where in the past I would film something and sing to, the, to what the shape was giving me as an idea. Do you guys want to see that? It's three minutes, or do you want to talk some more? What do you guys all want to do, ladies and men? To see that. I'd love to see that. Okay, and um, I have you guys been to other workshops? Because I actually would like to come and be a visitor of, an, of somebody else's workshop. Like, I'd uh, like to... There's going to be a workshop where George teaches how to paint trees, and I'll be teaching how to draw or paint eyes. It applies to any medium. And Alexander will be teaching abstract. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, uh, tell the person who, who's the person who invites usually? Is it Mwabi? Or uh, I don't I I have a lot of different it's, people. It's Jemima. Oh, Jemima. Can you tell Jemima to send me a invitation so that I can participate as a, as a student? <laughs> Um, okay, I'm, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Okay, I'm going to share with you that video before we run out of time. I know that Zoom is limited. Oh my, okay, let me share this with you. Okay, here we are. We're on internet. It's not going to be a very nice image, but hey, it's better than nothing. So, this is something I filmed a long time ago in 2012 in Pimet, Albania. It's water, and I sang in front of what I was filming, and then I took the video, the sound, and I just put a little echo to it and doubled it. I did a little sound effect to it after, but I actually was singing in the moment while filming these weeds in the water, these seaweeds. These, it was a thermal water. So it's, it's almost like painting with a video camera. So that's also a technique you could try out, you know, to get inspired. Okay, <clears throat> it's still another, you get the idea, if you want to see the link, 
I can give it to you later. I think we should stop because it's going to end soon. I'm sorry to shut it off, but I don't want it to. Ju I want to say bye to everybody, but I can send you the link. It, I don't know. Did you guys like that type of thing or? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we have a link here, so we'd love to try that. You have what? We have a lake. We have water just nearby here in Kwashi. So. Oh, awesome. Well, then there you go. You can try all sorts yeah. of crazy stuff on. Yeah, you we, have a camera uh, and your staff. Oh, cool. There you yeah. go. <laughs> so, cool. So, that's a link. Um, I'm glad that it's inspiring. Uh, so, how many are you? So, all of the people here are residents, artists? George, Jacob, Florence, Alexander, Isaac. Um, no, it's, 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 only, it's only George, Jacob, and Alexander. Okay, and what about Florence and Dave? I'm no? an artisan photographer. Just, that's already something to, look, you know, you can explore <laughs> with the photography now. You could make sounds while taking pictures or you could uh, take lots of different pictures and make a stop motion and add some sounds to it or maybe film. You don't, Yeah, I sure. Mean, you I, would, I would love to try that. <laughs> yeah. Try stuff out and explore your country's textures, your... Your country, I mean, I don't know any much about your country except for what Seppo's told me about, but um, from what I can gather, you guys have a lot of very rich, ancient texture, cultural, orality, I, like you, you got so much to, to work with, visually and sonically, you know, yeah. you can make soundscapes. I don't know if you guys know what soundscapes are. A lot of visual artists create soundscapes that accompany their art. You could even make installations with with sound, creating soundscapes that you, just recording sounds in your environment, uh, textures that are just from your country, you know, that are, are and uh, you know, like just textures that are from where you are on your land. Yeah. And then kind yeah. of combine it together with some free software. Like, there's a free software that you can get on, download on internet, and it's called Audacity. I don't know if you know this, but it's, um, it's an editing sound software. But you don't have to be that complicated. You can just record one sound and then, and then play it back in your installation or with your photos. For example, Florence, I mean, yes. you, could experiment, you could experiment with taking pictures in an area where you are and then recording the sound where you are. And then later on when you expose your photos, you could expose that sound that goes with your photos that inspired you subconsciously to take those pictures. Like if you were right. in some... Wow. wow. That would be yeah, interesting. I mean, the, these are just a lot of different synesthetic, like, you know, techniques to kind of push and dig further into your personal art making, you know, wherever, whatever style you have, you know? Yes. I think I would be open to explore some of those ideas. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and that and it's not just for you, but the, that goes the, not only for Florence, but it also goes for all the other people. Whether you're painters, sculptors, or you know, you let yourself explore. You know, I mean, I have a good voice, but you know, I didn't do like opera music, you know, training. Uh, but I I gave myself permission to sing and. I think I sing okay, but you know, I didn't like, you don't, you don't have to go to sculpture school to sculpt. You can try stuff out and if you like it, you keep it. It's like painting too. You know, you can just, you don't necessarily have to go to painting school to be a painter. I, I think what it is, is just being poetic 
you know, just working with the poetry that surrounds us. That's my two cents worth. <laughs> working with the poetry inside and outside of ourselves. I think that's what makes an artist is somebody who is embracing the poetry of life. Yeah, because no matter how true. much technique, yeah, because no matter how much technique you'll learn in life, in whatever domain, if you don't have that poetry that accompanies it or that feeds it, your work will have no soul. So I guess that's what's important. And there's already this beautiful poetry that exists that I believe comes from God. So, I mean, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. So a lot of my artwork is connected with my relationship with, with the creator, with our God. But, you know, I mean, I have artists, friends who are very good artists who are not believers and they do good artwork too. It's just, you know, just was telling you about myself a little bit. So, I don't know. Anything else? Should uh, anybody want to share something? Before we leave each other? Thanks for the program. It has really helped me to understand a lot of things. And also, like, in our Zambian culture, we have this, uh, when celebrating our traditional ceremonies, there's sound that are played by playing the drums. And those, they, like, they can provoke feelings or provoke um, this connection with the ancestors where the people are playing that drum. And then it also gives the, the teaching to the audience uh, at that particular time. So now I understand how... It's, it, has been, it has been able to communicate with people by playing the drums and making sounds like that people don't understand. And it, it will sound like people are speaking in tongues, but it's just, you know, they're just making this sound to provoke, uh, to connect with the ancestors. And it happens every time in our culture. Yeah, that's, um, so... What you're saying is very beautiful, and there's, uh, it's uh, actually many, many percussionists uh, reference themselves to African percussion because um, Africans, when I say African, I'm, I'm not just talking about Zambians, but all, just a lot of the people in Africa have always been very strong very powerful with their drumming, with the drumming yeah. as communication, like you say. And, um, you know, uh, it's true that it, what's funny is that there's more references to really the master percussionists of the world, of, you know, classical music, of world music, of uh, folk music. They always reference themselves to African percussion because it's very powerful. It's very, very powerful and very rhythmic. It's got very strong rhythms that are very sophisticated. It's not always, it, you know, the, I mean, uh, but what you got to be careful of is uh, the, the spiritual aspect. Um, because uh, the shamans, which are, you know, most people in the world, uh, different cultures mm -hmm. like the Chinese, the Americans, the yeah. Africans, the Europeans, they would drum to connect with other spirits. And I mean, if you're drumming to connect with your memory, your ancestral memory, that's very beautiful and powerful. And that's a good thing. But I'm, I mean, I'm just telling you my opinion in the, in the spiritual realm, because I, I'm a Christian. It's yeah. very, it's very dangerous to, um, to call out other spirits with the drum. Because the only kind of spirits that are out there are not nice spirits. Because the, the dead people, our ancestors, they're actually waiting for God to call them back. But, I mean, I don't know if you're Christian or not, but I'm Christian. And I am. I am Christian. Okay, well then, it's very important to know this. Most pagan people didn't know Jesus Christ. They didn't know 
what we know today. That's why they were looking and they were searching through nature, through sounds, and communicating with the other world, you know, the Indian Americans, they're, a lot of them yeah. are still doing it. But it, they, they think they're talking to nice spirits, but they're not. They're just talking to demons. So mm -hmm. when you're, when you like, if you're going to do some powerful cultural work with the drumming and stuff and the ceremonies. No, I'm not going to do that. Just, oh. No, you can. I mean, it's, you totally, I think, I think it's okay. You do whatever you want, but. I mean, I'm actually singing right now with an African drummer from Senegal. I'm doing Berber chants with a, with a, a very excellent percussionist. But I'm just saying, just remember, you know, the drumming, it, like those rhythms are inside of your archetypal memory that are in your cells. And the memory of your ancestors are inside your body. And it comes yeah. out through your painting and your art and... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just saying, you know, it's every, yeah. like, the artist is a very, very I, spiritual I, I would love person. to try playing with the drums, and I've done painting oh, where we have, we have the drum. I've done a painting already where I have the drum, and I'm trying to explain the same communicating with playing of the drums. But I'm just doing that to, like, share out my knowledge about it. But I'm not going to, like, actually go and play the drums with the, ancestor connected teachers or something like that but i'll definitely try playing and then paint to that sound yeah i think that's awesome but you could even yeah. paint with the sound of those people drumming i mean as long as you as a christian you can pray if they're calling out are they calling out spirits or they're just going into a a musical cultural thing or are they going into trances uh, mostly, I think it's just to keep people, like, keep the audience focused, like, let's focus on, let's meditate on this, so. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's beautiful. I mean, you have such an amazing heritage, like, go ahead and explore it, and you could even paint with, well, you could be with them and, and be, like, two sessions where you're painting and you're listening to them drumming, and you can just paint and feel the energy, or... You could even drum a little and stop and paint and be with them. I mean, all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's yeah. exciting. It's, thank you for sharing all of that. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. everybody, if I talked about spiritual matters. I know some people don't like it, but I can't help it, you know? <laughs> it killed me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot for sharing, uh, sharing that. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's very beautiful. What kind of drums do you have over there? Uh, we we don't have drums, actual drums right now, but most of the drums, they, they make them from uh, these big trees. They'll just cut the tree and then curve it, make a hole inside, and then they'll get uh, a cow skin and then put it on top of that uh, wood. And then we do play on the top and then to make the sound through that uh, hole inside. Wow. Yeah, so it's cool. all connected to nature, yeah. Beautiful. Well, you could even do some beautiful stuff on the edge of the water with your drums and the, with all of you guys, and maybe even, you know, with um, Florence, even if you're not part of the residency, you could maybe everybody try to, if you're in the same uh, area, same town, you could all get together and Somebody could film and document. Somebody else could, I don't know, you could even do an art performance on the edge of, I mean, there's so many possibilities. Yeah. Well, you need to let me know what you guys end up coming up with, all right? I have no problem. I want to see what you guys are going to do at the end of your residency. Mm -hmm. So I really was really happy and thank you so much, George, for, you know, sharing with me that experience of the drumming. I think that's really fascinating. And yeah. you could even, you know, take on some of those sounds and bring them out with your own voice with the drum and be like, uh, 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 uh. you know, like you could, uh, I don't know, you could just go wild with the whole thing, you know.
yeah, I'll email you stuff that I'll come up with. Yeah, you guys, does everybody have my email? I'm just going to write it down for everybody here in case you don't have it yet. That way you guys, please feel free, everybody, to write to me or tell me what you were all doing, okay? Well, take care um, and have fun. And uh, thank you so much for being interested in what I wanted to share today. Um, so, thank you too. Thank you so much for your thank time. You. Thank you for the hallucinatory lessons. Thank you for the inspiration as well. It was a pleasure. And thank you also for sharing your experiences with me. I hope I'll see you again at, a, at some other Zoom connection. Yeah. And God bless you all and, and with your artworks. That you're all going to make beautiful art pieces and keep growing. Thank you. I'm still growing. I'm like 46. I'm still like, I'm still like <laughs> exploring and learning all, you know, it's tons of things I have to work on and get better at, but it's, it's, it's fun. It's, yeah. and you know, if there's one thing I want to say, please just have fun with whatever you're doing. Uh, don't take yourself too seriously because sometimes when we take ourselves too seriously, that's when we get stuck. What's important is to just let it all flow. Just keep letting it flowing and don't worry about the result. Sometimes it's going to be very good and sometimes it's going to be very bad. But what's important is to keep, you know, doing it. You know, that's how you're going to really get connected with your work and you're going to get more and more like that's, that's the, the thing. Just don't take yourself too seriously. Have fun. And let yourself do your visions. And remember, there's not a single artist out there who's perfect. I mean, even Leonardo da Vinci, his artwork is not perfect, okay? I'm sorry. Yeah. It's got problems. Sometimes it's, it's nice, but it's got things going on in his paintings that I find are not there. Like, it, sometimes it lacks gestural expression, you know? So everybody has a right to exist with their art, you know? And if ever anybody says to you, oh, well, that looks like so-and-so, or, oh, you're copying this. That's like, we're all copying each other. It's not, you know, like Picasso copied, actually, you know who Picasso, he got inspired by masks from Spain because he was Spanish and from African masks. That's yeah. where he got a lot of, and he would copy other painters from his past and get inspired by them. Um, all of the artists were always copying somebody else, but by copying, they got into their own thing. You know, and everybody yeah, has yeah. their own special thing going on that's worth seeing, worth expressing, okay? Yeah. So, and I'm excited to see what you guys are gonna all come up with.